the first kiss I had was with a client who was pregnant, and I shoved my tongue down her throat. Oh, wow. That was quite unethical. <laughs> quite unethical. Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where multi-talented guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch. Oh, my God. Jane Lynch. I'm so excited to meet you. Oh, shall we couch surf? Oh, let, let's do it, please. All right. You think Lynch is the bad guy? Yeah, why not? So at this point in your career, yeah. you spent many years at Steppenwolf Theater and at Second City in Chicago. Yeah. And were you looking to land in a blockbuster with <laughs> no. Harrison Ford? I was, of course, uh, you know, in Chicago, being a workaday actor as much as you can there, and when doing temp. And I don't know exactly how it happened, but the the film was coming through town, and I got an offer. Really? To play this part. Wait, you didn't even have to audition? No, I didn't audition. Now, I know Harrison Ford famously gave you advice about keeping your mouth closed because yeah. anyone on camera with an open mouth looks looks stupid. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you look stupid if your mouth is agape. So they were doing my close-ups, and obviously I was... And he went, you look stupid. Oh. Any other advice <laughs> about no, the craft, but, you know, about I will, I will say, though, that he didn't like the scene as it was written, mm -hmm. so, um, and it was raining outside, and he uh, took me under his umbrella, we went to his trailer, and we worked it out. We worked the scene out. You know, you say this, and then I'll say that, okay, and then I'll say this, and you say that, because he didn't like how it was written, so we worked it out, and we came back in, and he was kind of, he's kind of a cranky guy, and he was like, we're going to do it this way, and everyone, all right. But you kept your mouth closed. I kept my it. mouth closed. <laughs> Up next. Hey, hi, hi, I'm Robin. I'm Christy. Christy. Nice oh, to meet you. Uh, I, oh my Chuck. God, you're so short. Oh my God. Christopher Guest discovered you in a Frosted Flakes commercial yes. that he was directing. That he was directing. Walk me through the process of improvising on his set. On his set, well, you because show nothing's really mapped out. Or no, well, a there is. Map, yeah, yeah. There's a then, there's a scenario. Right. So each scene has a particular point. You know, uh, there we're not shooting in a vacuum. So we have some story that. We we have to take care of so that's our responsibility but we come to the set fully fleshed out mm -hmm. and no rehearsal really? but in the meantime he's had he's told us some background about the character who we're working with and and before it all happens we meet with the set designer who says what do you think your house looks like what do you think your office looks like oh. and the wardrobe designer says what do you think you'd wear and you are in charge of all aspects so you create a Everything. really full nuanced backstory before even getting exactly on that set. exactly <laughs> next oh. You ever heard of the term? Oh my goodness, yes. Okay. Buddy. Do I even need to ask you a question? Jesus. Can you just go? Sure. Okay. Right. Sure. So Steve and I worked together at Second City. We were there at the same time, and we, we, we crossed paths on stage a couple of times. We were in, in different um, touring companies, but I knew him. And he, was, he actually got me that job. because he did? It was his wife, actually, who said, you have too many men in your movie. The store manager should be, you know, audition Jane. So we auditioned together, and we, in the audition, came up with the I offered to deflower him. Yes. So that came out of our improvisation for the audition. <laughs> And then um, Judd Apatow called us all in every day, even if we weren't um, on the call sheet, just, you know, because he would, like, say, hey, go in that scene. You know, uh, uh, you know, like, Seth, you go in that scene. Jane, you go in that scene. And so uh, we were there every day, so I had a lot of time to sit around and think, and I, the uh, Guatemalan love song came to me. Which we must discuss. Yes. Okay, so the Guatemalan love song, because mm -hmm. Apatow has scripts. Yes. But he uh -huh. also is famous for allowing his a lot actors of to improvise. Yes. So how much of that was scripted? How much of that was improvised? Well, the Guatemalan love song was, it was my idea. It was my brilliant idea. Um, I, uh, I, like I said, I was kind of sitting on the bench that, uh, that one day, and it came to me, and it's actually a dialogue from a level two Spanish class in high school. And uh, it, it's not a romantic song at all. It's about a kid who won't clean his room and then uh, leaves the house to, in haste, and the, uh, the mother says, where are you going? He says, I'm going to a football game, soccer. So, Do you remember the words? Yeah. Can you sing them now? I could. Yes, let's see. Cuando arreglan mi cuarto, no encuentro nada. Donde va con tanta prisa al partido de fútbol. I had a Cuban teacher, that's why I say my V's like a B. That was fantastic. Oh, thanks. I can retire. <laughs> so I'm could done. I, actually, I mean, except it didn't pay me enough. <laughs> wow. 
Oh, I didn't even know where I was. I was like, what is that? You know what that is, I girl. I do. The L word. I'm so embarrassed looking at this right now. But this, okay. I didn't even I realize. I look great. You do look great. You two look beautiful yeah. together. Yeah. This show was steamy. That was the most uncomfortable thing in the world. Can I just say that? But your first on-screen kiss ever was on the L word. I know. Oh, I know. my God. Yes. I. Uh, are you blushing? I, uh, are you blushing? Yeah, I'm so Is embarrassed. I can't tell. Right you. I don't know. Look at. What, look what's going on with my neck there. Um, I gotta say, I love Sybil Shepherd, but we and we had pasties on our nipples, <laughs> and basically. Um, Naked, but for um, uh, uh, I think we wore like uh, uh, shorts. Okay. Just it was just I couldn't wait for the day to be over. I can barely look at that. Oh, I don't Abby. like making out in real life, <laughs> much less making out <laughs> with someone I just met or somebody like say, well, I knew her. You knew her. And here we are. She looked bed. happier with you than she did with Bruce Willis. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I'm good, just good, saying. Good. Next. How many takes did it take to make that happen? That was easy. That was, that was easy? easier than being in bed with Sybil Shepherd. That didn't take much at all. I love that Gail is really open about her checkered past. She's yes. addicted to booze and drugs and pills and bad thoughts. Bad thoughts. Bad thoughts. That'll kill a person. That'll kill. Mm -hmm. It's not the coke. No, no. The bad, bad thoughts. thoughts. Bad thoughts. <laughs> Wait, do people still come up to you and ask what you had for breakfast? Yes. They do. And you know, they're mo it's mostly men, mm -hmm. uh, young men, right. uh, between the ages of like 17 and 28. And they go, hey, what'd you have for breakfast? Mm -hmm. And I always say, cocaine. <laughs> they say, what'd you have for lunch? Cocaine. Cocaine. C dinner. Cocaine. Cocaine. Yeah. Cocaine. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Gail. <laughs> oh, Gail is right. You know that look. <laughs> is it your bowels? Constance, you've experienced a lot. What in life matters? Oh, Ron, that question is... We had so much fun. I can imagine. Doing that show. Ken Marino is probably the person I would love to work with. I mean, I, everybody, but he is somebody who uh, can make me laugh no matter what. And I loved our characters in this I loved our uh, we were both equally stupid and naive <laughs> and had you know kind of um, uh, delusions of grandeur do you think a show like this could get made today yeah absolutely yeah, I, I think, think so. we should do a reboot of that that's probably the only thing that um, I, I've done in the past that I would say oh let's do it again I, I bet that would be so much fun all right, who's up? Hey, Sylvester, I'm talking to you. Oh, hey, buddy, I thought I smelled failure. Why'd you take the piano when it was my time up with the kids? A properly steamed, clean piano is key to any successful music group. You are... Okay, so that, do you see mouthfuls of lines? Yes. That is the, that was the, the biggest challenge, but it was the most fun. And how I had to clear camera exactly at that moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was so hard. <laughs> Why were Jane Lynch and Sue Sylvester such a great fit? Um, I think because uh, you know, you only have to scratch this much to get to the Sue Sylvester in me. Really? I can be, yeah. Um, I, I, my, I have a quick temper, and you know, now that I've had some therapy, I know what this comes from. Is it's, it's, it's um, protecting a soft heart. And I think, uh, you know, uh, Ian Brennan is the guy who wrote most of my dialogue, okay. and um, we're kind of the same person in a way. You know, he has this really dark side of him, and his, the, but you would never know it to sit down with him because he's a really nice, light guy. But he said his earliest memory is watching his mother load the dishwasher with the knives facing up and thinking, why don't I just throw her on top of this? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Wow. Okay. And his, I know his mother. She's a doll. <laughs> She's a sweetheart, but he has this dark, dark yeah, part of him. I you know. would call that a dark yeah, side. Dark. I would definitely call that a dark, dark. side. Up next, let's watch some more. Let's watch Whoa, some more. who's that? I know who that is. It's Jane. So you're doing a run of shows. <laughs> yes. At Cafe Carlisle. Yeah, Cafe Carlisle. Right the now with Kate. Legendary Cafe Carlisle in right. New York City. I mean, what's it like for you to be on that stage, it's especially, fantastic. especially with Kate? Yeah. Oh, well, Kate is my uh, my partner in uh, crime in the singing department. And <laughs> she's so much fun. She's such a goof. She is completely impulsive and unpredictable. And I am more precise, and I map things out. And then she goes in there and just blows it up. And hence is the uh, the the kind of the joy of our chemistry. Is live theater and being on stage is that your happy place? Oh, it is. Yeah. 
There's I nothing it. like it, right? Nothing like it is, and it, you know, I don't want to be up there. I never alone. wanted I never to be there alone. And there alone. yeah, if, if when I'm, I'm with Kate, Kate and Tim, Tim Davis is the guy who sings with us, and he was a vocal arranger on Glee. Oh, okay. And he introduced us to Tony Guerrero and the Quintet, and they are amazing. And so we've been touring now for like five years, and I just love it. Just love it. Just love it. Oh. I think musically it's quite beautiful, and uh, the little patter in between is, I think, quite funny. So I, I think yeah, people love it, and we end it uh, with a little bit of Anaconda. A little bit of Nicki Minaj. My anaconda don't, don't want, want none, none. Unless, unless you, you got bones, hun. That's what it is. I mean, it's just right out there. You know what she wants. Jane, thank yes. you so much. Oh, you're I quite welcome. I adore you. I adore you. This thank has been you lovely. so much. <laughs> you can catch Two Lost Souls September 11th through 22nd at Cafe Carlisle in New York City. See you next week on Couchsurfing. Bye.